Ah, okay, it's time for a chemistry question. And the chemistry question we're looking at today is on buffers. So we've got to calculate the pH of the buffer solution formed when 200 cm cubed of 0.6 moles per dm cubed NaOH is added to 800 cm cubed of 0.4 mole per dm cubed ethanoic acid. And you've got a Ka for ethanoic acid over there. So lots of numbers, you're gonna need a few formulas. Jot this all down, have a go, and we'll go through the solution in a few seconds. Righto, time to get through the solutions. Now, what you need to realize is this here is kind of method number one of two of making buffer solutions. So this one is where you add a strong base to an excess of weak acid. So the giveaway, right, you need to look for your question. And if you see NaOH, that's obviously a strong base. And what are you adding it to? Well, you look out for a weak acid. And in this question, you've got ethanoic acid. So that's your weak acid. So that's kind of the giveaway. So you've got to look out for those. If you see that, then you've got to, you've got to trigger in your mind that you've got to do method number one. Okay, now what happens in method number one? Well, let's draw what's actually going on. You've got a beaker. And what are you putting into that? Well, you're mixing some ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH. And you're also mixing in a bit of NaOH. Now, NaOH, as you know, is a base and um, ethanoic acid is an acid, as the name suggests. So there's gonna be a reaction taking place, there's gonna be some form of neutralization. So what we need to do is write out a reaction to show what's going on. So we'll have, let's just write this out. We'll have ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH. We're adding that to NaOH, so that there, and what's our products going to be? Our products are gonna be water and a salt. So the salt is going to be uh, sodium ethanoic, so that will be this with an Na on the end, and then H2O. So that's what we've got. Now, we've got lots of information. We've got some volumes, we've got some concentrations, so we should definitely fill those in. So underneath ethanoic acid, well, we've got 800 cm cubed of it, and we've got a concentration of 0 0.4 mole per dm cubed. Now let's fill in what we've got for um, NaOH, which is 200 cm cubed, and the concentration of that is 0 0.6 mole per dm cubed. And now, because we've got a volume and a concentration for these, what we can do is work out the moles of them, right? And to work out moles, how do we do that? Moles is equal to concentration times volume. Now, you can't just use the volume in cm cubed, you've got to turn it into dm cubed. So to do that, cm cubed, to dm cubed, you will be dividing by a thousand, okay? So do keep that in mind. So what, let, what I think what we should do first is maybe work out the moles of ethanoic acid, okay? So that's going to be 800 over a thousand and then times that by 0 0.4. So what does that give us? So 800 divided by a thousand and then times 0 0.4, that comes out as 0 0.32 moles. Okay, great. So we've got the number of moles of ethanoic acid. Let's work out how many moles of NaOH we have. So that's going to be 200 over a thousand and then times that by 0 0.6 so 200 divided by a thousand times 0 0.6 that comes out as 0 0.12 moles there we go so that is what we are putting into our beaker okay and initially there isn't going to be any of this sodium ethanoate so i'm going to put here zero moles and likewise at the water there Technically, we'll put zero as well. We're not too interested in the water. We're more interested in uh, the sodium ethanoate, okay? Now, what's going to happen? When these two react together, because there's not that much of NaOH, all of it is going to be used up first, right? So that is eventually going to end up at zero moles. There we go. So how much does it decrease by? Well, it's decreased by 0 0.12 moles. And so the other reactant is also going to decrease by 0 0.12 moles. Why? Because the ratio of these species is one to one. Okay, so ratio numbers here and here are the same. So all we've got to do to find out the moles of ethanoic acid which is left over after this reaction has taken place, uh, we'll just do 0 0.32 take away 0 0.12. So that leaves us with 0 0.2 moles. 
there you go. Now we need to pop over to the product side. And like I said, we're only gonna look here at the uh, sodium ethanoate. So what's happening to this? Well, this is a product, okay? So it's not going to decrease, it's going to increase because you are creating it, right? So you'll need to add on uh, 0 0.12. Why? Because again, the ratio there is one in front of that number there. So it's one to one, okay? So what would you end up with? We'll end up with 0 0.12 moles of the uh, sodium ethanoate. So there you go, you've got that. Awesome. So let's now draw what we've actually got in our beaker now. So we'll get rid of this. We started with ethanoic acid and NaOH. And now if you have a look through our table, well, we've still got ethanoic acid. We've got 0 0.2 moles of it, right? So here's your ethanoic acid. There it is. And remember that's a weak acid, right? So it will dissociate, but not much, okay? So we've got some of that. What else we've we got? Well, the NaOH, that's all used up, right? That's gone, so there's none of it anymore. Go across to the other side, we've got this, which is sodium uh, ethanoate. That sodium ethanoate there, when you pop it into solution, what's it going to do? It's gonna ionize. And when it ionizes, it's going to form CH3, COO minus, and Na plus. Now, this is the important part. You can see you've got your ethanoic acid, but then what have you just created? Well, you've just created its conjugate base over here, right? And when you've got weak acid and its conjugate base, that equals a buffer solution. So what we've done here is just created a buffer, okay? Now, to do any buffer calculation, you've got to use a Ka expression. So I've written that out down here for ethanoic acid. There it is, there's our Ka expression. And that's gonna help us to work out the pH. So let's drop this out. We've got Ka is equal to, and that's H plus, and then CH3COO minus. Remember that's our conjugate base, all over the ethanoic acid itself. So that there. And now what we can do is fit in some numbers. We've got the Ka. The Ka was given to us at the top. That was uh, 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. And now we've got to start filling some other values in, right? We're looking for the H plus concentration uh, because that's going to allow us to find pH. But now what we need to do is fill in the concentration of the conjugate base, okay? But please do not be fooled. What have we been given? Well, we worked out moles here, right? That's not concentration, that's moles, all right? So what we need to do is divide that by volume, right? So using that formula again, you make a little rearrangement, concentration is moles over volume. So we've got to find the total volume of this, like what's the total volume of liquid in this beaker? Um, we've got 800 cm cubed and 200 cm cubed. So all together, what have you got? We've got 1,000 cm cubed. And now, hopefully you've used that formula there to turn things into dm cubed. So that there is just going to be one dm cubed, which is great news because it means that all we're doing now to turn this into a concentration is dividing by one dm cubed. So it actually stays the same. So you've just got 0 0.12 moles per dm cubed. And likewise over here, if we divide that by one, then what have we got? Well, we've got just 0 0.2 mole per dm cubed. Put a slash in there, there we go. So now let's start fitting these values in. So we've got 0 0.12, that's in place of the uh, conjugate base. And now on the bottom of the Ka expression, remember that there is going to be your acid, right? How much uh, is the concentration of our acid here? That's 0 0.2, and there it is. So now all we'll have to do is just do some rearranging here. Uh, send over that 0 0.2, so we'll have, let's get a different color. We'll have 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 0 0.2, but then divide that all by 0 0.12, and that's going to give us RH plus concentration. Okay, let's fire that all into the calculator real quickly. So 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5, and then we're multiplying that by 0 0.2, and then put that all over 0 0.12. That comes out as a very small number we've got our H plus concentration as 2.9 times 10 to the power of minus five. There we go. 
So we've got our H plus. And now what we can do from there is then work out pH. So to work out pH, what do we do? That's minus log of your H plus concentration. So all we need to do is minus log this value. So minus log of this value here, and that will give us our pH. So let's do that now. Minus log is that answer there. And that comes out as 4.54. And there we go. So that would be the pH of our buffer solution. And so there's a few formulas there that uh, you needed to know, right? So maybe jot those down on a handy little revision sheet. That'll be really good for you. Uh, so you can keep it, obviously, when exams come around, have a look over it, etc. And then everything should go pretty well. Now, another buffer question coming out soon. That one there is going to be using method number two. So stay tuned and hopefully I'll see you uh, for that buffer question.